Hi, I'm Rick Smith. Thank you for purchasing the plane stick. You know, so many of my students, after a lesson, or even just during their own practice, they never practice correctly. And until now, you now have a practice learning station that will help you with so many different elements when you're on your own. I think it's important for you to learn to be your own teacher. Bottom line is this, the swing plane is one of the most important things and misunderstood things in golf. You're going to have a better understanding of what your swing's like and how you can make your swing much more improved later on in the show as we identify with some of your swing problems that you have. As you can see, the plane stick is extremely portable. In fact, you can use this at home or when you go to the practice tee, you basically put it on the ground, take it out of the bag, and open up the cross section like so. It's important to understand a couple things here. If you slice the golf ball, let's still have an on-plane takeaway where the hosel meets the plane stick. The wrist cock, the body turns back. Now ideally, we want the club to track back down on plane and hit straight shots. But you know what? If you're a slicer, there's an old adage I use. You've got to go a mile to get an inch. And I want you to do this. When you're using this plane stick to get rid of your slice, in fact, I even want you to start off feeling as if the club head is going back. You can see that I'm even fractionally above the plane stick. Wrist cock, body turns sufficiently, gives me some room as I make my move to my left side. I'm going to feel that club head coming down well to the inside. And now I have one objective left, and that's to square the club face up this way. Now that's going to allow me to learn to hit a draw. If you come back over the top of it, and hit this, don't worry about it because this is not going to break your golf club. You can see that it's very flexible, but it's going to wake you up and it's going to make you make a better downswing. Now you can see the plane stick is now working on the forward swing, and what we call this, this is a mirror image that we have on the back swing and the downswing. So you can see it's tilted, and what I like to do is I set up and I use the string alignment and I put it in the center of my club face and I just make little back swings and I'll go through. I'll go back and through working on the proper circle that we want to make to hit straight shots. Now, granted, if you're a slicer, you do too much of this and you need to learn to extend and swing out and hit some draws. As you become better at that and you start drawing too much, well, we want to come back to the line and you can see that I have a great forward circle and it's an excellent exercise because I'm not manipulating the club face near as much once I perfect this motion. Sometimes it's nice to learn the swing from the target coming backwards, more of a downswing exercise. And what we see with most people that swing over the top, they end up swinging to the left of the target. Now if you did that too much, you'd end up hitting the plane stick. Now what this does, it really allows you to extend and to rotate and this is what you don't do. Even if you fix this downswing, a lot of times you spin, you over-rotate your hips, the arms come way back inside the body and you still hit your cut. So it's a great awareness. If you hit this, this really allows you to extend and rotate and drive the golf ball to your target better. I love using this drill because we see so many people either overturn their backswing. You can see how I've moved away from the plane stick here. Or I see people do this. They move to the side, which shifts the spine to the left. That's that dreaded reverse weight shift. So what you want to do is use this as a reference in either case for the backswing. We want to keep it stable and go back. You can see how I've kept the same space between my right pocket and the plane stick. On the forward swing, you're in a similar situation. The only difference is there is a little lateral move in the golf swing coming down as you're turning. So what I want you to do is put the plane stick, say if I turn my left foot out, put it at the ball of the foot, and go ahead and give yourself a chance as you get to the top. Feel like you're bumping to the left a little and then you're turning. And then what you're going to feel, you can turn through your golf ball. Now, on the other hand, if you're a slider and you slide too far, just get a little bit closer to it. So when you make your turn, you're going to go ahead and turn out of the way and you're not going to slide as much. And you'll start to feel that. So you need to identify your swing problem, but again, it's very versatile in that case. You can see I'm using two plane sticks, one with a long rod, one with a short. You can see that this is the shaft angle plane, and this is my shoulder plane angle, which is measured from the golf ball running just to the base of my neck. Now, if you look at a great three-quarter drill where most people have problems, 
let's assume I'm making a good backswing to here. When I go to this point right here, you can see that I'm somewhere between the shaft angle plane and my shoulder plane angle. An excellent exercise to get the arms matched up to the body better on the downswing. A lot of you get here, a lot of you get over here, some of you get two vertical. So it gives you some a sense of where the club should be here and then you can move through your golf ball. You can also work on your trajectory. I remember looking at Hogan. Hogan would stay closer to this plane and he'd hit lower shots. Watson or Nicholas would go back and then they'd go more up and they'd get the club more in an up position and come down a little steeper and work on a higher trajectory. You've got that flexibility to do that with these two plane sticks. With the long rod with the plane stick, you can see that this is right off my left eye. And one of my goals is to swing back, let the head swivel a little bit behind it, and then as I come down, I can go ahead and move back to my address again. Now that's excellent for feeling turning back behind it and going back to it. You don't want to go this way. You don't want to run in front this way on the backswing. You don't want to go this way to where you can't recover. And you surely don't want to go back to the top and then move way in front. So it's a great reference for starting at left eye, allowing a little swivel behind the ball, and then back to it again. Excellent for your body motion for a lot of those of you that are having problems understanding body motion. This is a fundamental that you see from the best players that play the game. The bottom line is it starts with the setup. You can see my back pockets are out and up, which creates tilt in the spine, but yet it's still straight. Now, if you look at the best in the world, they'll extend back, they'll make their turn, and they're going to maintain their posture back and down. And you can see that when I'm hitting my golf shot. I'm not raising up going back, and I'm not going down this way, nor am I going this way through impact, which we see a lot of players do. You wonder why you're topping it or hitting it thin. You'll go this way, you may be okay here, but then all of a sudden you raise up. So you, the objective is to put the plane stick on the back and maintain that spine angle back and through, and you'll start to feel like, hey, I can hit more consistent shots from this position. You can see another great use for the plane stick. This is an excellent exercise for a person that has a right arm that flies around and club gets across the line or the right arm gets too far behind their body at the top of the swing. And you can see here that I'm using this cleat where the string line is and I'm basically I have that right at my right heel. Now you can get pretty much right on top of this. I have my right foot against the plane stick board or base and when I go back I'm going to make a turn and I'm going to feel like my right elbow is pointing down. Yes, it's away from the body, but it's pointing down. It's not getting behind me where I'm getting in that dreaded cross the line, terrible top of swing position. Excellent drill for that. Another excellent use for the plane stick. You can see that my left heel is about a foot away from the base. And you can see it's angled somewhat to where I can use this for an exercise that I think is so disregarded in teaching and in hitting golf balls. People have a tendency to throw the wrists, uncock them, get into a bad impact, and they're always looking this way through impact, breaking down. What I like about this is that it's teaching me to get into a good impact and in essence work on more of a hit and hold. What I want you to do is hit 75 yard shots just hitting and holding and working on a great alignment through impact. Now, after you get done with that, go ahead and go through your full swing. But let's get rid of this throw flip that ends up hitting this, this rod here. Now, another way to do it is in your short game. Get into your setup position, hands in front, weight left, and work to where you feel like your left hand, left arm, and club shaft are working through together. You don't want the club head to pass and hit this. This is a typical look that we see. We want to keep the hands, the shaft working through together in a good inline impact with a little bit of wrist cock going back. If you have two plane sticks, you can set up the ultimate practice rehearsal station. As you can see here, if I'm working on my backswing and my downswing, I now have both sides of the golf ball covered, which is very unusual. If you're working on this, for example, I'm going to step just forward, and I'm going to make back swings and through swings. I'm going to be working on the entire golf swing for the perfection. And again, it reminds me of the old plane board we used to see. You can use this also in another way. You can use this if you're having problems and you're a slicer, you can rehearse this exercise. You stand in between the tees here that are designated by the string alignments. I'm going to go over this rod 
make a turn. I'm going to go under the rod and then swing out to the right a bit, turning the face over and hitting a beautiful little draw. Excellent station for if you're in that slice mode. So to me, this is the ultimate in being able to help yourself because now you visually see what you should have always had in your mind conceptually about the golf swing. Well, as you can see, the plain stick has many, many uses as it relates to your short game, your body motion, your arm swing, and having an education or an awareness of where your golf club is during your golf swing, which I think are the key elements in understanding your game improvement. If you're not aware of what your problems are, you'll never fix them. And conceptually, you get a clear image of what you need to do. The plain stick makes it different.